Right. So, <laughs> so the idea was uh, they shot this room, and they shot this hand, and she is turning, and on the phone, her, her camera is on, and she's seeing the room in the phone. So my idea for this, and I know this is, uh, this is a bit of a hack, but this is what we do. But what I wanted to show you guys was the difference between a planar track with a mask and a planar track with a perspective grid. So this is a, a G mask in action, and it's tracked on, not perfectly. But if you look at it from the side or from the top, that G mask is not changing in 3D space. It's just a 2D plane, even though it's called a planar track. Right, so that's not going to work for what I want to do. But if I use a perspective grid, and I don't know if they've even made a video or talked about this, but with perspective grid in I think 2016, you can do a planar track. And when you do the planar track with a perspective grid, and it works great for phones, I use it all the time, and every spot I do now has a phone in it. Um, I've got a shot for you. Okay. When you look at the side or at the top at that perspective grid, it's actually moving in 3D space. And so let's look at it from this one. So it adjusts the camera to what it thinks is the right uh, dimensions, and it makes the perspective grid actually move in space. They talk about the G-mask a lot, but with the perspective grid. So what I actually did was attach a camera below the perspective grid. So that's driving your camera. So let me look at my, let me go back one and add the camera here. So perspective grid that's tracked, add a camera. And now that camera, let me hide the original camera so it's not getting in the way. And if we look at it from like the top or the side, and there's my camera right there. It's moving with the perspective grid. So then all we got to do is actually, you know, position it right on the perspective grid. And if you want to get crazy, you could actually put it where the iPhone lens actually is. So now that camera is seeing what the phone's lens is seeing. So then... Uh, what am I doing? I got notes here. Add a spear. <laughs> so I've got a spear, and the spear is textured with that room scene. And my output camera is the camera that's attached to the perspective grid. And so now it's actually moving as if it's the lens on that camera. So then we take that down here. What was my note there? I don't know. Here's the next step. So here's the camera that's moving, and that's a layer in, a, com in a composite if down you go here. Back, yeah. You said you've got the texture on some geo. Yes. And are we inside the sphere then with your camera? Yeah, let me see if okay. I can show you the sphere. That's a good idea, Jason. Wow, it's just lost. That's all. So, and, and the reason, if you notice my action is 1080 wide by 1920 tall. That's because she's holding the camera vertical oh, or the, the phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoot video. So the, where was I? So that geometry. Got disconnected. Let me do a wireframe. Yeah, I took the texture off just so oh. you can see. Because you can't zoom out far enough to yeah. see how big it is. So the camera <laughs> is inside that sphere. We're looking down on the scene. So we're treating the sphere as the environment, basically. You know, yeah. We're mapped to the environment, and then the camera's inside the environment looking at the spherical map. Yes. And I know to do this properly, you would actually want to do a spherical of the room to map onto that. But they didn't give you that. Right, they didn't give me that, and I kind of just hacked it together where, let's see if I can go back to turn off wireframe, move the material. So I kind of just positioned it where I thought it would look good in the scene. And you can kind of see how on that sphere it gets the warping. Really yeah. That's great. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so yeah, that the result of that camera is a layer in the next action that is then tracked again back onto the phone. So it's like the lens on the phone is what it's seeing. What else did I do down here? I don't remember. A little compositing kind of stuff. Anyway, that was my little quick tip. Why can't it do this? Give me the same info with the G Mask. I don't know. They it's made weird, right? they made G Mask G Mask sort of. It would be flat. fine if it didn't oh, work differently in the different modes. No. <clears throat> and I've been kind of frustrated with G Masks in action too, because no matter what you do, you can't make it three dimensional. Like if if you change it to vertex animation and you have one point here, there's no Z for that point. It's there's only X and Y for the points. Now you Even can if you're looking from the top, you can use you can rotate the axis that it is, that's above it. Hmm. But the actual G mask is only ever a two D you can do like a side view and drag it? Nope. Uh, because it's maybe cut out. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a cut. But the perspective grid is pretty sweet for getting actual 3D tracking. Mm -hmm. um, so then one other totally separate thing I wanted to talk about. Is everybody using the conform or connected conform? Kind of came out with 2016, and they fixed some stuff and made it actually work in 2017. Um, well, and let me explain why I use it. On the Home Depot stuff that I do, every spot has a 30, a 15, a Spanish version, a Spanish version with subtitles, an online version, and then probably an agency version. And all of those different things are different combinations of the same work. So with the connected conform, you get it set up, which might take a little bit of work. But then after that, any changes you make, you sync and all those different edits get the same effects applied to them. You don't have to manually update all your edits. So with 2017, they added a feature where, uh, let me just make like a, well, I'll show you one that I've already got existing. Um, in 2017, you can create an element or have an element and add, say create segment connection. So now this lets you make that little chain link on any element. So now that that has the little chain, if I copy that, go to another edit, but then that sequence and paste it. Yeah, and it all has to stay in the same real group. So as soon as it That's leaves the, that real group, it breaks that link. Can you time ramp it? If I drag this out here, this is now on the desktop real group and it's broken and separate. So the so if I do something to this like I don't know, but something cool. Text. Yay. Text. Oh, yeah. Blur. <laughs> Can you make uh, a black blur action? action? <laughs> Another thing, the timeline effects now have widgets. In the timeline. In the timeline. Why don't put our user group matchbox in there? I haven't seen that yet. So whatever I did to this black that I just made, <laughs> I have it. If I say sync, and you can look at all of your edits that have that element in it. So if I sync connected segments, go to my other edit. Segment connection is the parent. Yeah, okay. the parent. Then you can go yeah. The there's there's no parent and child. They're all equals. When you modify one, you can sync it to the other ones. But you have to have, manually have sync it. Sync? Yes. It doesn't update until you click that sync segment. It's like a safety, so you can be like, ooh, I don't really like how it's undo. Yeah. Uh, but it's not really a UI that demonstrates that it needs to be synced, so that could okay. be an improvement maybe for... Yeah, that's device. something I was hoping to see I think there's soon. a bug. If it does not work with soft effects, unless the soft effect was attached, 
Seriously, I think it's on the. It doesn't work with the renders. Like, so if you update it in like in one sequence, no. it's rendered. The next sequence, it won't. So that's working. Yeah. But it'll still update the. It's like, updated in both of those. Okay. If I copy that again and go to another edit, you add, a, add like a color for it to create the black. So like, I think this is just one aspect of the edit. It's pretty form, easy, The other thing you can form is creating like batch effects, same groups, and passing shots through the facility. It's a really good tool for that. It's maybe not for updating. If you render it yeah. and then sync yes. it, the thing that gets synced comes in rendered. So yeah, let me show you. So what I've got here, like I said with my edits, I'll have an English and a Spanish. They both have the same background, but they have different graphics. So in this background batch effects, I have all of the the work I've done to you know create that shot. And this is just something where the vanities change from one to the other. And what then, if their durations change? What do you mean? Of those shots on your versions. If I will make this one shorter? It? Yeah, will it know the common element? And yeah. It will? So the, the one that it's synced to here, it doesn't change the length of it in this edit. It still <laughs> keeps its same length. What if I that? So see, my, my elements in my 30 zero. start at 0, and the elements in the 15 start at 8. Awesome. Time rifle. Uh, it's like that one 15 can't. and it has a time ramp, animated time ramp on it or something to make it shorter. Again. You can't time warp a batch effect. I mean, a, a connected conform. I would have to get some footage, I think, to do that. But if I time warp. Just time warp that black clip. I'll put it in a batch effect. Create that. Copy that. Put it over here. Now you're saying each one has a different time warp? Now let's say you do a 15 cut down and maybe you do it like an animated time warp on your 15 to kind of speed a shot up or something. Stuff. Well, when you sync, it'll sync the time warp from 30. Oh, so it'll keep the time warp. Yeah. Oh, you don't yeah. sync. But you can, but you can unsync. You can, yeah. But what I do to get around that awesome. is do the time warp inside the batch effect, like at the end of your batch effect node or tree. Do the time warp in here. That's my soft. Oh, yeah, that'd be a smarter way to do it. So, and then what I was trying to show with the the difference in like English and Spanish, I have all the background work done because that's common in the English and the Spanish, but the graphic is different in each. So then the layer above that takes the back clip and adds the graphic on top. That's just a Photoshop file with the graphic. So all of these these four different edits all have the same background and I can quickly sync all four of those. And then for the graphics, the English 30 and 15 have a common element and the Spanish 30 and 15 have a common element that can get synced. Awesome. So question. Does that make sense? You. Yeah. Since you're not an Autodesk guy. No. And the first time I remember Jason showed us this and it was a little different. This seems really good. Uh, what are the gotchas? Are there any on this version? Well, if you watch the videos on how to use this, yeah. it, the videos are all about you're the central hub of a VFX house, mm -hmm. and you're giving shots out to other people to work on, and you're syncing them back in, and your whole edit, every shot, is a connected segment. Mm -hmm. I don't work like that. My edits will be a lot of clips that I'm not affecting, and then like a couple of clips I'll be doing cleanup on. So what I do is I'll assemble, and then I manually create that uh, create connected segment yeah. on just the shots that I know I'm doing work on. I like what you're doing. Yeah. Um, so. Another, I don't know if this is a gotcha or not. I was I kept asking for being able to branch or fork a, yeah, what a shot, so not a version, but like a fork, like a, an A and a B versus a 1 and a 2. So what I do for those is, you know, copy the element, and if, say this needs a different uh, a fork in the road, you un remove the this, this sink, 
rename it to, you know, B version. And then create yeah. segment connection. Now that's a new separate sequence element. It's it's kind of I I likened it to After Effects like a pre comp. Yeah. But what's good about this over an After Effects pre comp is that you can quickly break it mm -hmm. from the rest and create a new branch and go off in that direction and still have your old branch. You said putting it in the reels breaks its connection. How do you copy leaving? It? How do you copy it from there to the next? If you do, do you copy have to like copy this. And paste? Copy through the pop-up menu, or if you insert or overwrite directly from one edit to another. So, like if this was my source, or that's that's my record, and this is my source, and I do the actual like patching, whatever, and then hit overwrite, it maintains the sync. But as soon as an element leaves the the real group, it's so it's its own right thing. There, bam, sync is gone. Yes. It's lost its little That's chain. where I think, like, yeah, I, that to me is a, a coming from a smoke editorial first and not complaint, but back in the day, uh, real group is not the right name. It's like sequence group is it, more, you have to think of it like that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and that's you know, maybe one difference. So if you're do, used to using more on the smoke side of things, you're not used to reels yeah. that much. So when you make a real group, it makes reels yeah, and a sequence reel, reel, and I immediately yeah. delete these because yeah. I don't know so, how to use those. Yeah. Yeah. Is for when you have multiple edits that use the same footage, like um, you know, in a thirty and a fifteen yeah. and a director's cut, and that way you're not constantly chasing each edit with the effects work that you do. All right, cool. Jason, you're up. Right. I'll make you